So, the Academy Awards are almost here, and I figured it was time that I try an Oscar prediction video. Now, I can't do every category, and I have not seen every film nominated. I'd have to, I am really heavy into film and cinema, but I cannot see everything. This video is on the Best Picture nominations, and I haven't even seen all of the movies. I've seen half of them, and I'm lucky I've been able to see half of them. Now, first of all, the Academy Awards has decided this year that instead of the usual five nominations for Best Picture, they're doing ten. Now, I kind of... Actually, I really disagree with this decision because if you're going to do ten nominations for Best Picture, I think for like a year, you really have to have a year of tremendously good cinema. And this was not a tremendously good year of cinema. This was a year where we had stuff like Aliens in the Attic, New Moon, all kinds of movies that really were not even close to the line of average. So yeah, I disagree with 10 nominations for Best Picture. Now, that's one reason. The other reason I disagree is because some of the things I've seen, I really don't think sh should even be considered a Best Picture nomination. Like... For instance, I've, like I said, I've seen half, so I'm going to go with uh, what I thought of these five nominations. You all know what I thought about Avatar, but I'm going to go with these. So first nomination that I'm going to look at is The Blind Side, which is one that I seriously think does not need to be on this list. Because The Blind Side, it was a very good movie. It's not one of those movies where I could walk out and say, that was the best picture of the year. That'll get nominated for best picture of the year. That wasn't even close to my thinking. It was a very kind of cliche storyline. Yeah, it was a very emotional performance from Sandra Bullock. I wouldn't be surprised if she got Best Actress. But it really was not something that was awe-inspiring. It was good. It was pretty good. But it was not something that I think will walk away with the Best Picture nomination. It wasn't a terrible movie. It just, I don't think it's worth best picture of the year. Now next on subject will be Avatar. Now, you all know that I almost called Avatar a 10 out of 10 on uh, my other channel in my review. Now, I still think it is a great movie. I think it's one of I think it is James Cameron's best work to date. Um but well, I think it's a more emotional story in a movie like Titanic, but Avatar really was just a very stupendous movie. I think, I I know this is going to walk away with the best visual effects. I know Star Trek had great visual effects. This is going to be the thing that walks away with them. But Avatar is really sort of a gamble if you're going to go in and say, I think this is a best picture of the year. Because rarely epic movies like Avatar walk away with with uh, Best Picture of the Year. Look at movies like Slumdog Millionaire, No Country for Old Men. Those are the most recent uh, Best Picture of the last two years. Those are not epic movies. They're very emotionally driven stories. They're very, you know, you can relate. You, not know, you don't know what's going to happen. It's one of those things. There are movies that, there are epic movies that do get, get uh, Best Picture nominees or Best Picture awards not just nominations. What would be uh, Braveheart and what was it? Oh yeah, Return of the King. Return of the King, I was surprised actually got Best Picture. I really was hoping that it would, but it was at a time when I thought, you know, they're probably just gonna go for something like, I don't even remember what 2003's nominations were aside from that. All I remember is that it won, but I didn't think it was gonna win because I figured that Hollywood was too snobby. Oh, we don't want a fantasy movie to win Best Picture. No, let's look at something that has great production quality or some crap like that. That's another reason why I figured that... Uh, I, that's one of the reasons I didn't watch the Academy Awards back then. Because it really was something where they, they claimed it was the Best Picture. And I kept on going, you know what? You may say this is the Best Picture, but I know a lot of people are going to disagree. Movies like... You know what? I'm getting off topic. Okay. Next nomination I'm going to look at that I saw is Up in the Air. I saw this with uh, my dad. I think it was the last movie I saw in the theaters. And it was a very good movie. It really is one of those movies that focuses straight on the characters. And really, every single performance in this does not feel out of place. 
There are some small, there are big actors and small performances, but they really just nail the parts. Like some of them, like uh, uh, J.K. Simmons, he's in this movie, and he had a very small part. He was on for like maybe six minutes, but it was a very good role for him. And there was a lot of other people that are in this movie. Jason Reitman, I, I think it's Jason Reitman. I was getting confused with his dad, or I, Ivan Reitman, but I think he's the one that directed it. It really is great direction. It really fits into the kind of style of movies that he does, like Juno. And it was just a great performance. Anna Kendrick, like I said in a video where I praise Anna Kendrick's performance in this thing. It really is a perfect role for her. And George Clooney was great in it too. It really is another performance that he has just rocked the screen with. So yeah. What are my feelings towards that? I think that it's got a good chance for Best Picture. I would not nail it down as the Best Picture of the Year, though. Okay, next movie I'm going to look at. That would be Inglorious Bastards by Quentin Tarantino. Now, I am going to publicly admit, and it's nothing personal, I don't have a lot of... I don't have a lot of liking with Quentin Tarantino's movies. It's not that I hate the guy or anything like that. I've never even met him. But one of the things, the reason I don't like Quentin Tarantino's movies is that it's a style that I just don't get. It's really, his movies, like, and a lot of people have mentioned this, his movies are really, have a lot of talking. A lot of talking. And this is probably a movie, out of the movies I've seen of his, that has the most talking. But the thing is with his movies is that his dialogue, the long periods of dialogue, are supposed to set up tension, I think. And that does work, but and it really is the best movie that I've seen him do because it's a very broad cast. It's a movie that really takes chances and not something that's going to say, you know what, this is a fictional story, but that doesn't mean we can't mesh around and make it something almost totally fictional because it does involve real characters like Adolf Hitler and some of the Nazi Germany party. But yeah, it was a very good movie and it's some like Diane Kruger, Brad Pitt, and a lot of people, one of the guys from The Office who I was surprised to see in there, he's actually not that bad. And um, a lot of good people, Michael, Mike Myers, I almost said Michael Myers. Mike Myers is in this movie and it's probably one of the first serious roles I've seen him in years do. And it really did feel like a genuine role. It was, like I said, a uh, lot of talking. You gotta have a lot of it, some for somebody like me. You gotta have a lot of patience with uh, Quentin Tarantino, but it pays off in the end with uh, his setting up of tension and his dialogue scenes. So yeah, I think that's got a fighting chance for uh, best picture. And if not, then it is definitely the best pi best picture that Quentin Tarantino has ever done. Now, the last movie that I'm going to talk about, and I am glad that I saw this because I missed the chance to see it in the theaters, was The Hurt Locker. This was, uh, when I saw the trailer for this movie, all I saw throughout it was almost perfect movie. This was a stupendous film. All kinds of just, it was like almost, the, people were treating it like the Jesus Christ of cinema. And I just said to my, I, a friend of mine really wanted to see it before college started. And I really wanted to see it with him, but we didn't get the chance. And I finally, a couple weeks ago, rented it along with Inglorious Bastards on DVD. And it really was just a phenomenal movie. From what I heard of the BAFTA Awards, this walked away with a lot of awards. It got a lot more than Avatar from what I heard. And it really is. The great thing about it is you have a character who is just this sort of adrenaline junkie. And he's just, the things that he does are so like deadly and yet he dives into them because he's got this obsession with it. And it really is something that people have said like, you know what, this is about as close to realism for a soldier that you can ever get. I don't know, I'm not a soldier. I barely know any people that are involved in the military. But the great thing I found about this movie is they didn't undermine anything. They didn't over glorify anything. It felt like you were actually in the eyes of another soldier. It really felt like a very genuine and appropriately balanced movie. So yeah, 
those are my feelings on the Best Picture nominations. I really wish that I could have seen all of them, but I still say there should not be 10. That's it. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and good luck in Oscars.